Hello, Pastor Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries. Uh, we might have some more technical problems today. I'm not sure if things are reading right here. Uh, I hope it is. God bless you all. Actually, I'm going to start again, okay? No. Okay, someone let me know if this thing's working right, okay? I apologize. Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries, past the job. Great message today. Passionate. It's titled Passionate Peter. And like I say, Priscilla, I think I see you there. Let me know if this thing is, is coming on right. Thank you. Um, a shout out to all of our friends of the ministry, brothers and sisters in Christ in Atlanta, Georgia, and New York, and Philippines, and Kenya, and uh, South Korea. Uh, just... Uh, just thank you all for being here and being part of this ministry. Passionate Peter. Father God, as I speak your word, don't let me be rattled by technology. That seems to be a struggle for me often. <laughs> let me, let me be a vessel for you, Father God, as imperfect as I am, a vessel to be used to speak your amazing truth, your amazing love. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Peter. Okay. I think everything's working. Peter. Apostle Peter. So often in the Bible, not in the Bible, so often in the world and Christian movies and films and things, often I've seen that Peter is portrayed as like a, a bumbling fisherman, so to speak, sometimes. Just various movies I've seen, and that's not who he was at all. And Peter was a fisherman, owned his boat, partners, I believe, with, with his brother, Andrew, and partners with other people that had their own boat. He was a businessman. He, he was a fisherman businessman, his own business. And God used him, Jesus used him to build the church. He was the first to be called by Jesus. He was also, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read about that a little bit. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. And this is when, I'm gonna, just going to read it, okay? One day as Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and that's where they did their fishing, great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed, that's Jesus, he noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, who he later named Peter, which in Greek means rock. He didn't always act like a rock, but he was the rock. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. And this time, the nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help brought their partners in the other boat. And soon, both boats were filled with fish on the verge of sinking. And then Simon Peter realized who he was dealing with. And the Bible, he, I believe he had contact. He was a disciple of John, John the Baptist. And I believe he was aware of Jesus, but he knew Jesus as his Lord. At this point, when he saw the miracle, he got down on his knees. He fell to his knees before Jesus and he said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. For he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught, as were the others with him. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, 
Don't be afraid. For now, from now on, you will be fisher. From now, from now on, you will be fishing for people. As soon as they landed on shore, they left everything and they followed Jesus. Now, when I said they left everything, they were still fishermen. And Peter had a wife and would, and the Bible refers to him taking her on mission trips. But he stopped what he was doing and he left and he followed, he, he went with Christ. Christ says, follow me. So when Christ says, follow him, stop and follow him. It doesn't mean you stop your job. Sometimes it does. And sometimes God provides another way. And it doesn't mean you dump your wife and kids, no. But it means you commit yourself to following him. And that's what these first disciples did. Peter, awesome Peter. And the message today is passionate Peter. We're just talking about Peter right now. But he has such a passion. He, and, and we're just going to go over some scriptures. And by the way, if, you had, if, you, if you're not a believer, thank you for being here. Just listen to this. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just going to read some scriptures. Peter was a regular human being. And yes, he was a businessman. He was a fisherman. I'm, I'm assuming he worked pretty hard. And half the disciples, the apostles of the crew of 12 that Jesus put together to change the world were fishermen. They weren't, let's say, the elite. They weren't from the biggest universities. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, everyone, if you feel like you're, got, you're not good enough, for God to use you, or you've committed too much sin, or you've fallen into own sin, where you need a repair job from the Lord, and you need a fix from the Lord, or, you, or, or the enemy's just telling you you're not, you're not good enough. You need to look, read, who Jesus used to, to, to start his ministry on this earth. Peter was not perfect. We'll talk about that in a minute. And Peter, on all, in the Bible, when they list the, the 12 apostles, his name was always the first on the list. Peter, he was a, typically a spokesman for the other apostles. He wasn't just some bumbling guy. He, he wasn't just some crazy guy. Yes, he walked on water. Yes, oh, Jesus, you're there. I'm coming for you. That's the passion that I'm talking about. That the Bible talks about. That's the, that's the passion he had for Christ. The passion for seeking Jesus. The passion for following Christ. The passion for the truth. The miracles of eternal life. The miracle of salvation. The miracle of God in the flesh, Jesus. And... Um, so he was a spokesman for the other apostles, typically, often. Um, he also, there was an inner circle of Peter and James and John. And this was the inner circle that Christ had. Um, they went to the Transfiguration. They saw many miracles together. And this was his inner circle that he would spend special time with. And you know what an inner circle is. Those people you can confide with, that you can consult with, and bounce things back and forth. You can sharpen the sword together spiritually. And he was also, Peter was also the leader of that inner circle of Christ. This is Peter. The Peter that we all, well, we saw much Peter. He walked on the water, but he, but after that he denied Christ. When the rooster, you know, before the rooster crowed, he denied Christ. And, when they were taking Christ away. But it's also the Peter, that's the rock that was instrumental in building of the church. Um, Matthew chapter 14, we're going to go over a couple of things, especially for people that are new here, that don't know the word or aren't even Christians yet. Um, Matthew chapter 14, and this is when Jesus walked on water. No, sorry, and, and Peter.
And I'm just going to read from it, from the Bible. This is when um, they were out in the Sea of Galilee at 3 a.m. in the morning. And about, and they were in bad weather, bad waves. The Sea of Galilee, by the way, could be extreme. When, you, when the Bible stories, they're not exaggerating about the bad weather. The way the land is shaped there and the, and the hillside, just the way the, the wind comes in into that body of water. They call it Sea of Galilee because it's big. It creates incredibly rough water, like being out in the ocean. It, it really rough water. So when they talk about storms there, it's, real, it's really dangerous, difficult storms the Bible's talking about. And this starts happening at 3 in the morning. So about 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came walking on the water toward them. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, oh, so much here. Don't be afraid. You're in the storm. Jesus says, don't be afraid. The world, everyone, is in a storm now, as we know. The whole world is in an uproar. All the nations, not just America or for the Philippines or Africa. The world is in an uproar right now. He says, don't be afraid. Jesus said, take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, this is about Peter now. Peter called him, Lord, if it's you, tell me to walk on the water. Jesus said, come. <laughs> so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why do you doubt me? There's so many messages. I've given the message a lot of times just on this scripture here. But it's part of the other message, rest of the message I'm doing today. You take your eyes off Jesus in the storm and you sink. If the enemy starts grabbing you, you drown. If you don't keep your eyes off Jesus, he just reaches out and grabs you. He will every time. And I'm talking about not just from the Bible, but I'm talking from my own life. In the Transfiguration, Matthew chapter 17. We're talking about Peter here again. Transformation is when, well, I'm going to read it. P Jesus took Peter and their two brothers, now this is the inner circle, to a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed so that his face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Lord, it's wonderful for us to be here. If you want, I'll make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. His passion, he's always the one jumping up. And Jesus says, no, we don't need all that. <laughs> but he's always, I'm ready, I'm jumping. By the way, I'm I'm sorry to look sideways. For some reason, this is not set up right today. Last week I struggled with, well, I was an hour late because I had no live, I couldn't get to live Facebook. This week it was here. I was able to get into it, but it's sideways. I'm hoping um, you're not having to watch sideways, everyone. Someday there's going to be someone helping with this part of it so I can focus on the message that I have. Someday. John chapter 21. This is when Jesus had been resurrected from the, the grave. And the, some of the disciples are in a boat and they're fishing. And hold it. I don't have the right scripture here. I apologize. 
But here's where, here's how it goes. Jesus is on the shore and they're fishing. And it's after Jesus has been resurrected from, from the dead, from the grave, defeated death at the grave. So we know when he says he's coming back for us someday. And if we're a believer, if we're in the Lamb's book of life, we will get a, we'll be resurrected from the dead. We'll be given new spiritual bodies fashioned like that of Jesus Christ made by God's hands. So he was, he, he said, see, he gave his life for us, but then he also defeated the enemy because the Holy Spirit rose him from the dead. The same spirit that lives in us, the same spirit that, that rose Jesus from the dead, the spirit of God lives in you and me if we're a believer. If you're not a believer, ask Jesus in. It takes two sec I mean, 10 seconds. And I, it doesn't take long. Jesus, be my Lord, please. I'm sorry for all my sins. I know you died for my sins on the cross. I repent. Help me change the way I think. Help me to think like a child of God. Please, Holy Spirit, move into me. Spirit of God. You're saved. You don't have to do it. Just take a week. It takes just seconds. And your complete life has changed. It's real. When you give yourself to Christ, everyone feels something different. But you... It's not a blank, I can tell you that. You feel something. There's a change. The, you know, we're talking about the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. That means healing. Sometimes people speak another language. Um, it could be physical healing, it could be emotional healing, it could be victory over depression. You could pray with somebody against depression, and sometimes the power of the Holy Spirit will operate. Depression just leaves. And so you're going, what happened? Whew. The greatest miracle, greatest manifestation. The greatest manifestation of God's Holy Spirit is when someone gives their life to Christ, they become a child of God. Because the moment you give life to, the life to Christ, at that very second, you become a child of God, not his creation. You become a child, and you're made right with him. Okay, and you got eternal life and a place in heaven prepared for you. And it's getting dark out here. It's raining out. Um, so, they're fishing. They're not catching anything. Jesus put your net on the other side. And the nets, are, the, I think they're, they're tearing. They have so much fish. And, um, you know, I had a store here I was going to read. I never even finished it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but they, they, um, they, they, could, they had so much fish, the net was breaking. And Peter looks out there and it's Jesus, he sees Jesus on the shore. So he puts his tonic, tunic on it some clothing because I just didn't, they had the fishing clothes on and he jumps in the water. That's what I'm getting at. Look at the faith. The faith, the passion that Peter had jumps in the water. <clears throat> you know, Matthew chapter 16 is when Jesus calls him a rock. And Jesus is visiting and he says, who do people say that the son of man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah as one of the other prophets or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, this is Jesus speaking, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. What's up, Rusty? Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from the human, from any human being. Now I say to you, that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. When, when Jesus told Peter, because he was the first to call him the Messiah, he says, you're my rock that I'll build my church upon. 
and the powers of hell cannot conquer it. That's powerful. And Jesus already knew, with all that being said, and with Jesus walking on the water with Peter, and all the miracles Peter had seen with the, with the other disciples, I'm sorry, <laughs> even with all that, Jesus already knew that Peter, passionate Peter, intelligent Peter, was going to deny him when the authorities hauled away Jesus to whip him and torture him and eventually to kill him. And when he took Jesus, you know, three times, three times, Peter, the rock, Denied Christ. I don't know him. I'm not from there. I'm not from that region. I don't know him. I'm not one of his disciples. That's beyond my comprehension. God, I mean, anyone who's listening now, if you walked on the water with Jesus, you, you'd, be, you'd be beyond your comprehension that you could ever, ever, ever deny him as they're taking him, hauling him away. But he did. Because even though he was the rock, the rock that Christ built a church upon, he was also weak. He had his weaknesses, like we all do. So if you have a, in your weaknesses, don't walk away from Jesus and think you can't serve, you're not good enough. Because Jesus told him, you're the rock I'm going to build my church on. And Jesus already knew that Peter was going to deny him at that crucial time in the life of Jesus. Jesus know, he knows our weaknesses. He was in a man's body. He was tempted by all the same, same things we're tempted by, but he never, he never sinned. He never failed like we do. It doesn't mean, oh, it's okay, walk in sin, embrace sin, he'll still use me. That's not what I'm, I'm preaching here. I'm just saying what the, what the Bible, what Jesus did, passionate Peter, with everything he saw and everything he was doing with, with Christ, he failed at a, in a big way. And Christ still used him. And Christ forgave him. And Christ, I believe, my, Peter might have been the first. Rusty, come on. I'm, my dog is nervous, but go on, go on. Sorry, everyone. It's pouring rain out here. Beautiful, isn't it? Um, and I'm sorry today. This is a, I'm very passionate about passionate Peter. I'm sorry I'm still having troubles with my internet stuff. After doing broadcasting, for like two years. I apologize. <clears throat> Go, Rusty. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <clears throat> the message is clear. It's not embracing sin. It's not saying, oh, Jesus knows you're messed up. He'll use you. But he knows we have problems. He offers a way to have to conquer these problems with the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of God. So when we have a problem as a believer, we take it to God and we ask him to fix it and he does. But we've got to go to him. We've got to ask his Holy Spirit, help me with this. And you can pray against the enemy, problems in your life with the authority that Jesus gives you. So you use his name against the enemy. I pray against the enemy of depression in the name of Jesus to command you to leave. I pray against cancer in the name of Jesus. And right now, I'm going to pray for people right now. Father God, we lift up everyone who's following this message now, whether it's now or in the future. Father God, I lift up the name of Jesus against the enemy now. And with the authority given me, I'm using the name of Jesus against the spirits of depression and suicide and loneliness and confusion and lack of self-worth and pornography and addiction. I pray against and, and tension and anger and lack of... I pray against these in the name of Jesus with the authority given me and I command you to leave now in the name of Jesus. Where was I?
Look at X. And whether you're a seasoned believer or, and thank you everyone for being here. I can't really, um, Priscilla, Doug, Melissa, thank you all for being here. If you're, whether you're a seasoned believer or a brand new believer or you're not a believer, read, read the first, first half of Acts, book of Acts. And read First and Second Peter, all the New Testament. And there's the first half of the book, first book of Acts speaks a lot about Peter and how God used him after Jesus went to heaven. The Holy Spirit was given to the church. The Holy Spirit was not just temporary, given as needed, but was given to all believers to move into them permanent. And that's when Peter, Peter was very powerful, not powerful, the power of the Holy Spirit was manifesting in Peter in all of the of, of the disciples and the apostles because the Holy Spirit was given to all believers. And Jesus said this was going to happen. He says, go wait in Jerusalem. When I go home, go wait there. You're going to be given the gift that God promised you. That's the Holy Spirit going to give you the power and the boldness to tell me, to tell people about me, tell people about Jesus everywhere in the world. Samaria, Jerusalem, the out of the ends of, of everywhere. Everywhere. That's across the street. Your neighbor at work to be bold, to not be scared. These people were persecuted. And, and Peter, near, near the later part of his life, the persecution, Nehru took over. They were just trying to get rid of the body of Christ. It was terrible persecution. Terrible. Okay. I get excited. I love Peter. I, I, there's a bit of Peter in me. And I love it. It can be difficult sometimes. And when I get to heaven, I will see Peter. He's one of the first people that, I don't know if there's a waiting list for 10,000 years when you get there. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. But I'm going to see him. And it's going to be really awesome, you know, breaking bread with Peter. And it makes you want to go now, doesn't it? But <laughs> God's giving us some more time, everyone, to populate heaven. Not just to exist or to suffer or to worry. Book of Acts, one of my favorite stories here is Peter and John. We're at the temple and at the at the beautiful, I think they call it the beautiful gate. That's the main gate to the Jewish temple. And you gotta remember the church started in the synagogue. Jesus started preaching about him and the salvation, the gospel message in the synagogue. That's where it started. And then they had home churches. So they're at the, um, going into the real gate of the synagogue or the temple. The temple. The beautiful gate. Sorry about that. At the temple, the beautiful gate. And that's the main gate. And the Jewish people like to be known when they were giving and helping. So that was the right spot. And this beggar, he, he never walked. He was crippled. I don't know if he ever walked at all. But he was crippled. So he's at the right spot to get money. He was not looking to walk. He wasn't thinking about a miracle from Jesus. He was thinking, this is a good spot to get some silver. He's a beggar. Got to eat. I need some money. And Peter and John are there. And he's begging. And I just love this. This is Peter. This is the Peter, the fisherman, the businessman, married man, walked on water, denied Christ at a crucial time, forgiven, filled with the Holy Spirit, leading the church, a leader, a leader, gifted. Oh, when he spoke, when he was taken in front of the religious leaders and the councils, you know, and, and when they questioned him, spoke, oh, what came out was just beautiful. Like I say, read, if you're a new believer, you know, you haven't read this. Not even, if you're not even a believer, read the first half, read Acts, the first half of Acts. Then the rest of the book of Acts goes into Apostle Paul. So the, they, they don't have any uh, silver. Oh, great. You got these, these two dudes here 
that I want some silver. They don't have any. And they go, I don't, silver, gold, we don't have. And the beggar's probably like, man. And Peter says, silver or gold I don't have. Puts his hand down and says, get up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. <sighs> Lifted him up and he started walking. That's Peter. He was bold. He was passionate. Let me tell you something. If I'm out in the boat and I see Jesus is walking the water, I'm getting out there. And I, I wish that would happen. But, he, but you know what? There's many times that we see Jesus and he says, get out of the boat and walk on the water. Many times. Passionate Peter. Father God, as I give this message about passionate Peter, I pray that, that whoever's listening to this message doesn't compare themselves to Peter. Doesn't, if you compare, you think I'm never going to be ever do what he did. He's in the Bible. That's Peter. He walked on water. Many of us have had walk on water type experiences. In many different, takes many different forms. Father God, I pray. We don't compare ourselves to Peter. We learn from Peter. And we realize we got Peter in us. That we can have the kind of passion that, the kind of passion that Peter has. That we can have that passion. Not that it's going to be worked up on us. Not that it's going to be all psyched up. That we, from the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus, and have the passion like Peter. And it takes many forms. You don't have to be the one to jump out of the boat, like Peter was always the first, but it takes many forms. And it takes being strong in your faith, like Peter, even though he had his weakness. And even with his weakness, God called him the rock, built the church on, gave him the Holy Spirit, started changing the world. God will change the world through all of us. Passion. Passion. What's the dictionary term for passion? Um, over, over zealous about, over zealous. Can't stop. Excited. Passion. Almost uncontrolled. I think one of the dictionary terms is uncontrolled. Peter was like almost uncontrolled. I'm getting out. Yeah, here I am. Here I am. Here I am, Jesus. Kind of cool giving a message in the pouring rain. <laughs> wow. I love you all. I pray for you all. That you can, you can feel the passion that's in this message today. The passion that Peter showed us that's real. That's available to all of us. We could all have that passion. With that passion comes an incredible reward. Because when you let that passion flow, uninhibited for the Lord, the blessings are immeasurable, but beyond comprehension. Especially when they're in the midst of a world that's in a big storm. Uh, I pray for you all in the name of Jesus. Listen, check us out on um, www.holyspiritranchministries.org. I'm going to say that again for a reason. www.holyspiritranchministries.org. We're getting into a fund fundraising mode, which we've never really done very well. We have a lot going on. We need to fund this ministry, which is in America, in Georgia, in the Philippines, and in Africa. Indian Reservation, refugee community, even in Pakistan. This little ministry is reaching out. And we need your support. So if you go to our website and hit donate, it'll take you right to how to, how to support us. Take you right to PayPal. If you want me to give you a short, we're looking for partners also. It could be one-time support or partnerships, month, monthly contributors. Support the ministry for... Um, sustainability, and for growth. 
we have a lot going on. We, we, uh, God's given us a vision to build a training center up on the property where our home base is. And a training center. Kind of a church, but training center. The focus, the focus is, you know, getting healed and fixed and getting out there quick, fast, and spreading the gospel. We don't have a lot of time. The world's changing rapidly. So we have a lot going on. Small ministry. But a big, small, small ministry, but God's big. So if you go to our website, there's a donate button. And also, we're getting a partnership campaign going. If you want me to present you with something one-on-one, -on -one, uh, a little a presentation of pictures of where we're doing and what we're doing, besides going to the website, I will do that with you. Email me on holyspiritranch at gmail.com. And we also just hook something up with Pledge, which is kind of like PayPal, but Pledge is just for nonprofits. Kind of cool. And we just, this is high tech for us, right? My friends that are watching, going, there's no way you got this figured out. No, it took a bunch of us to figure it out to get me to do it. But if you go, if you go to text and you type in Jesus, oh, I'm sorry. If you type in speak Jesus, speak with no, no breaks in it, just speak Jesus. And you send it to 7070. 7-0. It'll take you to our pledge, a pledge site where you could donate. And it's, it gives you a spot to become a monthly member, everything else. So I'm giving you three ways to do this, right? Partnership calling me. You could do that through just going to um, Speak Jesus, 7-0-7-0-7-0. Go to our website. I know that's a lot I'm talking about, but I haven't done it much. We're at a time where we, uh, God has directed us to do this. Um, it's by his direction. There's been three or four people involved in our ministry that have really been trying to help make this happen like this. So um, I don't mean to badge you with it. I love you all. Thank you for being here. I, I, do, I do wish I had this message with somebody else doing the technology part with thousands and thousands of people preaching, speaking the word to us about passionate Peter. Oh, there's so much power in that. There's so much real power in that passion. We're not talking fake passion. We're not talking putting on a show. It's about the real thing. Inspired, powered by the Holy Spirit, the love of Jesus. Thank you all for being here. I love you all. God bless you.